Hello friends, welcome to Insights High Yielding Prelims Series. Okay, in today's video, we are going to discuss about five topics which are related to indexes and India's performance in these indexes. Okay, in case if you miss out the previous videos related to Prelims High Yielding Series, you can find these videos in the playlist of Prelims 2024. There is a playlist called Prelims 2024. In that playlist, previous videos related to this Prelims 2024 rapid revision, you can find these videos there. Okay. By the way, in today's video, we are going to discuss about first global hunger index 2023. When you are when you look at any particular index, we have to look at few things such as who are publishing that index, if any prominent organization is there, then which country is topping that list, and what is that index is talking about, and what is the India rank in that index. These are the details we are going to discuss. Okay. And if any uh, supplementary information related to that index, okay, whether that index is reflecting changing uh, trends in India, if any things are like that, the, those things also we have to keep an eye. Now, anyhow, let's see, we'll, we'll, you will we'll get an understanding. Global Hunger Index 2023. Okay? And first thing you have to, you have to know that friends, tell me which sustainable development goal dealing with the hunger, okay, which sustainable development goal dealing with the hunger. Please put your answer in the comment section. Now, Global Hunger Index 2023. First, what is the India rank? India ranked 111. 111 out of the 125 countries. And this is a very serious thing regarding the hunger. Next, who publishes this one? It is generally published by Concern Worldwide as well as Wealth and Hunger Life. These are the two organizations. Okay. Concern Wildlife and Wealth and Hunger Life. This Concern Worldwide is an international humanitarian organization which dedicated their effort to tackling of poverty. Wealth and Hunger Life, it is a private organization in Germany and it was established in 1962 as a German section of the Freedom from Hunger campaign. It is an extension of this particular campaign. So now this is the publishing organization. Now next we have to understand score. This Global Hunger Index score, it is calculated on 100 point scale. If a particular country is near to zero, that is the best score, whereas 100 is the worst score. That means 100 means um, towards 100 means the severity of hunger is very high in that particular country. Next, we have to understand hunger can be calculated with various parameters such as malnutrition. That means overall reduction in the nutrition of children. Then stunting. That means inadequate height according to the age. Then vasting. That means inadequate weight according to the height. Then finally, mortality rates. That means how many children are surviving beyond five years. If you look at these things, undernourishment, the share of population whose caloric intake is insufficient, then child stunting here, height according to their age, child vasting that is about low weight according to their height, and child mortality that means how many people, how many children are dying before their fifth birthday. These parameters will be calculated. If you look at the neighboring countries such as Pakistan rank 102nd, Bangladesh 81, Nepal 69, Sri Lanka 60th rank that means they are scored better than India. And sometimes you have to check whether is any uh, country top in the Asia, which country is topping in the Asia region. Those kind of things also very important. If whenever those kind of important data is there, I tell you anyhow. Regarding the child stunting in India, around 35.5 percentage according to National Family Health Survey 2019-2021. Then undernourishment in India, around 16.6 percentage. Child vasting, 18.7 percentage. And under 5 mortality rate is around 3.1 percentage. These are some of the percentages according to National Family and Health Survey. So this is the first one, India's, I mean, hunger index as well as India's performance in the hunger index. Next, second one is India ranked 40th in the Global Innovation Index 2023. Here, this is about how a particular country is encouraging the innovation. You know that if a particular country is encouraging innovation means there you can understand more number of startups also can be seen. Actually, in this particular niche area, Switzerland generally tops this kind of indexes okay, in terms of innovation. Even, you know, students, government of India also took some initiatives to encourage the innovation. If you know any such kind of innovations from government of India, put your answer in the comment section. India ranks 40th in, out of 132 
in terms of global innovation index it is published by again you have to know global intellectual property organization wipo actually intellectual property rights are innovative work of the individual or organization they should be protected and that will be taken care by the wipo wipo i mean protects not only the intellectual property rights even the patents trademarks logos can be protected by wipo as well this global innovation index it is a reference of countries innovation ecosystem performance you know that in india to encourage the innovation states like telangana they created the t hub kind of measures as well highlights of the index most innovative economies in 2023 switzerland switzerland is the most innovative economy in 2023 followed by sweden usa uk and singapore singapore is top among the five and it is a leading country in the southeast southeast asia as well as east asia and oceania region economies next india secured 40th position of course this is a better for performance compared to previous times previously india ranked at 81 and in terms of snt clusters india has only four snt clusters compared to this china 24 usa 21 and world's top 100 after four in india chennai bangalore mumbai and delhi these are some of the clusters to encourage the innovation and wipo is a global forum for intellectual property organization it is a self funding agency of uno member countries 193 and main aim is to encourage the development by encouraging innovative ideas as well as creative ideas for betterment of everyone so this is about the second article that is world in innovation index third one regarding the climate change performance index this is about measurement of countries commitment towards the climate change here based on the their country efforts in various sector ranking will be given to country for example this entire ranking will be given based on certain parameters such as 40 percentage of the weightage will be given to greenhouse gas emissions 20 percentage weightage will be given to renewable energy 20% weightage will be given to overall energy and 20% weightage will be given to climate policy okay based on this based on these areas a country's performance in the climate change can be calculated okay now climate change performance index actually as no country is very good in achieving all these things that is the reason in this particular index first top 3 ranks are vacant no country given the first 3 ranks fourth rank was given the denmark and now india rank is around seventh rank compared to previous times now we improved our india rank in the climate change performance index this published since 2005 who are publishing that is very important german watch new climate institute and climate action network international these are the organizations which are publishing and it is indicating the climate mitigation efforts from how many countries 63 countries as well as the european union and uh, the 63 countries and european union they account for around 90 percentage of the greenhouse gas emissions that means it is giving ranking among the countries which are contributing to almost all 90 percentage of the greenhouse gases next metrics already we discussed four metrics will be considered in this particular index based on the performance in these metrics country will be assigned with a rank no country performed very well enough in all the category that is the reason first three ranks kept vacant fourth rank given to denmark it followed by estonia and philippines sixth rank and india given the seventh rank previously india was eighth rank compared to the previous times now india performed better of course india ranked ninth in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions 10th in terms of the energy use how come these better ranks uh, come, came to india the main reason is india's energy consumption is less that is the reason india is performing very well in this categories now if you look at the renewable energy india rank is at 37th countries 37th rank this position is declined from 24th in 2023 that means in terms of renewable energy we have to go long ahead okay so long way ahead so this is the india's climate change performance index and india rank next world happiness index generally you know that most of the times the scandinavian countries they are performing very well in terms of happiness actually how you will calculate happiness happiness will be calculated based on various factors such as quality of life and the cho the choice 
the freedom of choice to the individuals in terms of their economic opportunities, in terms of their career opportunities, health opportunities and life expectancy based on the, these various parameters, a person's happiness will be measured. Even you know that Bhutan is a country which calculates country's progress based on the happiness achieved. That is the gross happiness index. Let's see. Recently, the 11th edition of the World Happiness Report released by UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Since ever, that means since 2012, this UN Nations, United Nations Sustainable Development Solution Network, they are publishing this report. The World Happiness Report is based on two ideas. Happiness evaluation that will be taken by survey. Then identifying the key elements that determine the well-being. So, which key elements will determine the well-being such as life expectancy, freedom to make life choices acro across the countries. Okay? These parameters will be taken into consideration. Generally, this report ranks around 150 countries based on several factors such as GDP per capita, social support, healthy life expectancy, freedom to make life choices, generosity and perception of corruption. Based on all these indicators, ranking will be given. Top performance. Like I said, most of the times these top performing countries are the Scandinavian nations. Finland country continues to be the happiest country around the world for the sixth consecutive year. While Nordic countries like Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, these are the top performing countries. And the worst performing countries, Taliban ruled Afghanistan, it ranked last with Lebanon, Zimbabwe, Sierra Leone and Democratic Republic of Congo, they are in the bottom of the index. Okay. Then India ranks. India rank in the World Happiness Report is improved from 136 in 2022 to 126 this year. Okay. So, this overall India rank in the happiness index is improved, but it is placed well below the, you know, compared with our neighborhood countries. Last year it was 136, now it is 126. World Happiness Day, International Happiness Day. Every year 20th March, it is observed as International Happiness Day. And the theme of the 2023 is be mindful, be grateful and be kind. Bhutan is a country which is calculates, which calculates the country's economic growth in terms of the gross happiness index. Next, this is regarding the gender, gender gap report. Gender gap report gives indicates about the in equality in the gender, okay, equality among the gender, what kind of opportunities are available to the gender and gender discrimination, gender inequalities, all this will be taken into consideration and this report will be published. India ranked at 127 out of 146 in terms of the gender parity and it is an improvement of 8 places from the last year according to the recently published annual gender gap report 2023. And this global gender gap report, it released annually by World Economic Forum since 2006. Since 2006, World Economic Forum is releasing this kind of global gender gap report. And India rank is 127. And this gender gap report, it measures gender parity on following areas. Economic participation, education attainment, health and survival and political empowerment. That means participation of women in political process. It may be in the local legislature bodies or the national legislature bodies. The index ranked India's neighbors, Pakistan 142, Bangladesh 59. Bangladesh is performing better compared to India. Iceland is the most gender equal country. Of course, the majority of the Scandinavian countries are, they are very good in terms of happiness as well as the gender equality as well. Of course, when you achieve good things in kind of gender equality, obviously the happiness will be there in those countries. Okay. Next, according to this report, India attained that means parity, that means at least an average in terms of the enrollment of women in education level. And India almost has 64.3 percentage of overall gender gap. However, it underlined that India reached 36.7 parity, that means only 36.7 percentage of the women they reached to men in terms of the economic participation. Whereas regarding the enrollment in the higher education, around 64.73 percentage of the women, they are on par with the men. In this way, for example, political empowerment, this is only about 25.3 percentage per parity only. That means only 25 percentage of the women, they are equal to the men. So, by considering all these parameters, they give rankings. Okay. Next, learning objectives. 
we'll see today's video questions which of the following are the indicators used by ifpri to compute the global hunger index report to calculate the global hunger index report which will be calculated which metrics which of the following gives global gender gap index ranking the countries of the world so which organization will give ranking next global financial stability report is prepared by who prepares this global financial stability report so these are the today's mcq question now as we reach to the end of this video these are the topics we discussed in this particular video and this is the detailed analysis regarding the prelims high yielding series related to indexes and thanks for watching